All right. A major component of the English language is derived from certain French dialects. This is due to the fact that England was ruled by the Norman French for roughly 300 years. The Norman French were the descendants of a group of Vikings and Norsemen who settled in the northernmost portion of France. The Norman French were very imperialistic and were involved in many acts of conquership, such as the reconquest of Spain and, most importantly, the Norman Conquest. The Norman Conquest occurred in 1066 when the Duke of Normandy, William I, defeated King Harold of England in the Battle of Hastings. Once the English were defeated, William I took over the throne. He retained the English system of government and allowed the surviving aristocrats to maintain their land. Despite William I being relatively nice to the upperclassmen of England, they started a rebellion in 1068, which was put down very quickly. After this rebellion, William I uh, established a feudal system in which most of the land owned by aristocrats were given to the king's Norman followers. This created a more centralized form of government where the authority figures and upperclassmen were Norman. This power shift from English rulers to Norman French rulers had a big impact on the English language. This was because most of the written documents were written in French language. This made the language of aristocrats French instead of English. People who wanted to write scholarly documents or government officials would have learned French. Because of this language change, some phrases and words from French would have been implemented into common language. Once foreign accents and sounds were implemented into common tongue, it would have modified the development of the English language. When the Vikings conquered England, their language was Germanic, giving it many similarities with the Old English that the Anglo-Saxons spoke. The Norman French, on the other hand, is the Romance language. This made it so that it had relatively few words in common with their Germanic counterparts. So, when the Normans con conquered England in 1066, neither party could understand each other. Over time, the Anglo-Saxons borrowed Norman French vocabulary while keeping the Anglo-Saxons' basic structure. There were two main ways in which this happened. First, upon conquering England, the Normans forced their way to the top of the hierarchy and began engaging in things that the Anglo-Saxons had never done before. As a result, the Normans had terms for these words, whereas the Anglo-Saxons did not. For example, the Anglo-Saxons never had different names for the meat that is eaten and the animal that it comes from, because they were usually the ones farming rather than consuming the meat. The Norman French did, and they called it a filet of meat. The Anglo-Saxons would have referred to the meat as the same way that they do for an animal. Upon hearing the Normans use this terminology, Anglo-Saxons began using the word when speaking to fellow Anglo-Saxons. With time, the word filet was adopted into the Old English vocabulary to refer to a fleshy piece of meat. In addition, being at the top of the hierarchy created a split in England. The upper class spoke Norman French, while the lower class Anglo-Saxons spoke Old English. At the top of the hierarchy, the Normans were in charge of the military, government, judicial system, religious entities, and much more. As a result, all the terms used to refer to these things in a part of these entities, such as judge and battle, ended up being barred into English. This happened in three main ways. First, when an Anglo-Saxon had to go to court or be in the military, for example, they were surrounded by people speaking Norman French to refer to the various related things. Next, the title of many professions were in French, like judge, count, and plaintiff. Lastly, French was the dominant written language, because, unlike the Anglo-Saxons, the Normans had the time to write things down. As an example, the Normans used the word court, and the Anglo-Saxons adopted the word court. The Anglo-Saxons had to learn these words and ended up using them when talking to people who were monolingual and spoke Old English. Of course, this type of thing happened anywhere as long as the Norman was speaking and Anglo-Saxon overheard vocabulary being used. As time passed, Old English adopted these words into normal speech. It is important to notice, however, that when the Anglo-Saxons began using Norman French vocabulary, they did so by mimicking the sounds that the Normans made in speech, and it was later adopted uh, spelling for these words. Therefore, the spelling and pronunciation often ended up slightly different when compared to the French words being mimicked. For example, the Normans used the word alliance, and the Anglo-Saxons heard and eventually began using the word alliance. Doublets include two things. One definition of a doublet is a pair of words that have origins from different languages but mean the same thing. The word for giving some assistance is help, from Anglo-Saxon, and aid, from French. The relationship from the German word to the current German word is primitive. Er, the current German word is hilft. Another example is a word for young humans. The Old English gave the word kids 
while the French gave a word children. In current German, you can see the word's relation. A word for kid in German is Kinder. The second definition for a doublet is a word that comes from the same origin, but is used in two or more ways. A French example is pry, praise, praise, and praise, all of these words coming from pre. Another example is cattle and chattel. As you can see, all of these words are spoken similarly, but have different definitions. In modern times, words that come from French seem a lot fancier, such as aid, in relation to help. Of course, what constitutes a word as more fancy as the other? Most rich people in England were French, so if someone was to say something French, they would be immediately connected to the rich, wherefore French words became fancy. That's why aid, a French word, sounds fancier than help, an Anglo-Saxon word. When it comes to language, the Viking conquest was relatively easy. That is because Norse and Anglo-Saxon were both Germanic languages. They could both understand each other for the most part. As I said earlier, neither, par neither party had to learn the other's language. The Vikings and Anglo-Saxons could understand each other, and because of the similarity, it was almost difficult to know both languages as separate entities. Like with modern English, it isn't practical for someone to learn another dialect, like Irish. They are both very similar. And although an American likely wouldn't understand absolutely everything an Irish person says, they would likely be able to deduce the meaning of almost everything. Even though Old Norse and Old English weren't similar to this extent, this idea still holds. In 1066 CE, the Normans invaded England. William, the Duke of Normandy, declared himself king. Since he was from Normandy, he only spoke French. Because of this, the language of the upper class started to change to French. In this time, almost all the documents were written in French because only the upper class had the ability and the time to write things down. There are also many documents written in Latin because while the rich people's language changed to French, the scientific la language was still Latin. For about the next 200 years, French is still the leading language. Then it starts to lose its prestige. The king at the time, King John, lost the French part of Normandy to France. A few kings later was King Edward I. He was the first king in a long time to start speaking only English again. This is when the upper class started to learn English. One thing that helped this was that many foreigners were coming into the country. Compared to them, the people of English started to feel more English, which made them want to learn the language faster. Even though the upper class was mostly spoke English, they still used some French words. To the lower class, this was considered very snobbish. In 1337 CE, the Hundred Year War against France started. This war branded French as the enemy's language and caused everyone in England to hate French completely. From 1349 to 1350, the Black Death ravaged England. This helped English to become more popular, first by killing a lot of the Latin-speaking clergymen. Latin slowly became less and less spoken. The Black Death also helped by killing a lot of the working class. This caused the status of the lower of the peasants to rise and they became the middle class. After the plague, both the middle and the lower classes only spoke English. In 1362, the Statute of Pleading was written. Even though it was written in French, it declared English the official language of the courts and parliament. In 1385, English became the language of instruction in schools. By this point, English was spoken by almost every single person in England. Between 1250 and 1500 CE, almost 10,000 French words were borrowed into English. Most of these words were, were related to topics such as government, law, social life, or learning. All of these words were ideas that applied to the upper class only, not the middle or lower classes. As a result, the lower classes did not have any words that were related to those ideas. The words that they then needed, they borrowed from the upper class people who already had the French words for them. The Norman French were descendants from Vikings and Norsemen who settled in northern France. They succeeded in conquering England in 1066, and after multiple rebellions, established a feudal system in which fellow Norman French were in charge. Once the French were in control of the government positions of England, they introduced certain words and sounds which altered the modern English language. French mainly influenced English O'Reilly. That is, for the most part, the Anglo-Saxon began using French vocabulary because they heard it, the Normans using them. The basic sentence structure stayed the same throughout the Norman reign. All of that French vocabulary is still used today.